Ana Luisa was founded to bring clarity to the jewelry industry. They design pieces with a beautiful story from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible, transparent business practices always, and in small batches that are kind to the earth. Ana Luisa is of exceptional quality, long-lasting pieces crafted with care from the best noble metals. They make limited batches, ensuring the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste. I just ordered a piece from Ana Luisa. The piece is called Scarlet and they're double hooped earrings. I'm super excited to wear them out. Go to Ana Luisa, A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash Think Loud Crew and treat yourself and your loved ones and use my code. Think Loud Crew to get 10% off. I absolutely recommend them. They are a great brand, making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. Again, analuisa.com slash Think Loud Crew, code Think Loud Crew to get 10% off all products. Welcome to the Think Loud Crew podcast, three moms getting real with parenthood, relationships, and the WTF moments of our daily lives. Today, we have a special guest, Mama Sunshine. Hi, guys. Grandma Sam. (laughs) My mama. (laughs) Professionally known as Margaret. Right. So excited to be here, ladies. Thanks for coming on. I feel like, you know, you should have been on a lot sooner, but... I no. think you're one of our first female female guests. Am I? We've um, only had a very we've only had f- like, like two others. Yeah. Well, who was that? The female Lily and Charnel. Oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry, yeah. but yeah, but still, um, you're, you're our first mature female yes. guest. Yes. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> oh gosh. Hey, wait. Yes. I just want to say we're really excited to have you on. Normally, you are in total grandma mode while we're doing this and holding down the fort and watching the kids. Literally all the kids. So, <laughs> guys, all the kids are in the next room over with our dad. Let's yeah. pray that they all survive. And I don't think he was planning on being watching here right oh, now. Oh, he for sure isn't. <laughs> and he was not planning on being on grandpa duties. No. And, um... It's happening. Let's just say thank you, God, for letting this moment happen like this. Yeah, I had to lug Ace up here. Ryder's out there. She's delusional because she just got out of school. I think all the kids are actually delusional. I think they're all delusional. Just got out of school, but we're going to make yeah. this happen. So I think we should jump right into jump it. Because right I don't know how long I have for Ace to be quiet, who's actually in and my the arms. Kids. He's looking at you very intently right now, <laughs> like, hey, mom. Right. And the kids outside, you know. They you get know. a little restless. Yeah. And start Ash, calling our names. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm nervous, scared. too. <laughs> so we put up um, a post on Instagram and asked people what they want to know about you. Doom, but doom, first, doom. let's mm. tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Margaret. I am from L.A., born in L.A., but moved to Altadena when I was three. I moved back to L.A. when I was 12, so went to um, school here in L.A. I am one of three girls. My mom, I was raised by a single mom. Okay. (laughs) Of this, of the three daughters, where are you the oldest, youngest, I'm the middle youngest. child? I am the youngest. You're the youngest. Of three. We were stair steps. So what so, does that mean? Well, we were right born right after. So who? What is the age? Or <clears throat> um, if you don't, so stair steps. Ages. I think sixty two, sixty, and fifty nine. Oh, okay. So you guys so are all, all very close, back, very to back. close back, mm-hmm. to back. Mm-hmm. back to back, back to back, and sing, oh. raised by a single mother. Doing raised that. by a single mother who was, um, who is a wonderful, wonderful woman. Yeah, I've, I've heard stories. You helped me through a, a patch, and just hearing the stories from how your mother, single mother, and sacrificing and doing the things that she needed to do to raise you three is just amazing. So yeah. I learned a lot from my mom. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot from the strong women in my family. Lots mm-hmm. of strong women. Uh, my great aunts, my grandparents, yeah. my great grandma. Um, I come from a big family, so learned a lot. You're an entrepreneur? Yes, I am. Yeah, mom. Come on. <laughs> I have a business. Do I need to toot like... your own horn? <laughs> no. So, um, 
when I graduated high school, my friend's mom said, take the test and work at the phone company, Pacific Bell. That's what it mm-hmm. was back then. And so at 18, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I did that for a year and learned a lot, really learned mm-hmm. a lot. And then I said, okay, I need to go back to school. because I need to go to school because I want to do something different. So at that time, I decided to go to court reporting school. And well, actually, I went to Santa Monica College for a while. Mm-hmm. And from there, went to court reporting school. Um, that lasted a while, but I had kids. I was pregnant with Kyle. At what age did you get pregnant? Um, at what age did I get pregnant with Kyle? 26. Well, how old were you when you got married? Because you got married first. I got married at 26. So I got pregnant. I, had, I got married at 26, had Kyle about 27. I was oh, pregnant in yeah. two seconds. I was just about to say, you were not playing around. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> my, my birthday is two days before my parents, um, what was their wedding, wedding anniversary? Right. Oh wow! Gross! Yeah. Y'all are getting it on. <laughs> no. Not gross. <laughs> we had we were together nine years before we got married. Oh okay. So when yeah. we finally got so married, you guys are, we were old. You know, was you old. guys yeah. met when you were you were young, seventeen and nineteen. I saw one so. of the questions. Um, somebody asking how you did meet our dad. Yeah. Can you how tell you meet, us about that? How did you meet Papa Floyd? Um, I went to Fairfax High School, and. A mutual friend that your dad had grown up, Freddie, was at my house. Freddie had- Mac from way, way back, if you're listening to this. <laughs> so we, I, hey. I always had a lot of guy friends, and um, Freddie was one. So your dad was in school, in college, in Utah. Oh, he wow. was home for a minute. Freddie was at my house, and there was a fire around the corner from our house. Well, Fred and I said, let's go see the fire. Y'all being some nosy bad kids. <laughs> I was in high school. I was 17. And um, we went to see, we went around the corner and your dad happened to be home from school. And I said, well, who was that on the bike? Who was also, <laughs> who was also there to, to see, see the, the fire? fire. <laughs> Y'all were all nosy. Wow. This had to be this a really big fire. <laughs> or there all was the just... neighborhood kids to come out to see. Wait, wait. This was also before, I... like, cell phones was really, like, right, a thing. Right. Hey, no so one was gaming, well just come so out. was like, so let's who, go see the fire. Do you know who dad was there with, or was he by himself? I think he was just... By him <laughs> on his bike, <laughs> on his bike, looking at the and fire. Freddie uh, was your friend, but also Dad's friend. Yeah. Oh, okay. so Freddie he introduced and Uncle you guys Tony somewhat. Oh, okay. so I went home. I was kind of like, "Well, who was a cutie on the bike?" Uh-huh. And then I told another friend, but I said, "Don't tell him." I said that. Of course, they told him. Of course, they told him. Yeah. <laughs> and now look at where we are. <laughs> Is that what I need to do? Just be like, "Who's that cutie over there?" <laughs> right. <laughs> On the no, bike. you need you need to go see a fire first. Yeah, right? <laughs> Just go hang out at fires. <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's my story of how I met your dad. And then from there, you kind of I know you guys used to write each other letters. There was a, a letter. Oh, there was just one letter. Well, your dad's kind of a strange man, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm much that. Oh, he's my friend. Your dad and I were friends. We we were we're still friends. Yeah. I love that relationship, too. Yeah, we're still friends. They're actually both crazy. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> but it's so awesome to watch sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of funny because some like there are some of the other questions. We don't have to really dive into it. But people are like, how how long did it take for you guys like to become friends again after you divorced? And I think one thing that people have to understand is my parents have had a business together for a very long time. And they were friends before they were married. So it's like, you know... It's not that they weren't friends. They just needed some time apart from each other. And, but they didn't really have that time apart period of time from each other because they were still working together. So it's all, it's kind of... We kind of grew up together in our it's, early 20s. Yeah. But when we did divorce, um, the business, it's a great business. And, you know... You had to keep it going. We had to keep yeah. it going. Yeah. Had to keep it going. So. I have a question. Somebody was asking, how did... Um, or how? What's some advice you would give to a new entrepreneur, starting their own business and all those obstacles to go through? I would say planning. You have to plan and be willing to sacrifice. Um, lots of long hours. I would say um, really do your research on the business that you are going to start. 
sometimes there's opportunities out there that it may not be what you want to do, but it's a good opportunity mm-hmm. because the business that we ultimately are still doing, mm-hmm. it wasn't my, I would have never thought I'd be in this business, but it kind of happened and it works. Mm-hmm. So before we, can you share with us what your business is um, and how you got into it or how you became exposed to the industry okay. itself? Well, I was in court reporting school mm-hmm. and at the end, when it was time for me, when I was doing my internship, by that time, because I, you know, kind of skipped some things, but I went to school for a while, and it was either go to, I went to a JC for two years, and then it was either go to a four-year college mm-hmm. or do something else, and I said, okay, well, I think I'm going to go to court reporting school, but that was, court reporting school was really difficult, but during that time period, <clears throat> I got married, um, I, I had kind, a kid, yeah. you know. I work with my mother's business, Mm -hmm. so that was kind of a a long period of time. And once I started doing my internship, I said, oh, I don't want to do this. What was your internship? (laughs) (laughs) Meaning, It's court reporting, like literally like. The stenographer. It's the the person typing in the room. Typing in the room. And it's like short. Boring. It's like, it's a special keyboard. (laughs) So you can type really fast. Yes. Yeah. Can you still type really fast? Well, I can, I can still think in that shorthand, mm. which is really interesting. That is interesting. Be- so when I finally got to the end and I looked at your dad and said, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, help me. He and said, he was I'm like, you know, done. he probably wanted to strangle me. But <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> I changed my mind. And the reason I changed my mind is because well, I didn't really think of this. And the most important job that I wanted was to be a mother. Right. Mm. I really wanted to be a mom, mm-hmm. and I wanted to be a hands-on mom. Um, being Did you want to be, like, a stay-at-home mom? Or what, when you say hands-on, like, how well, were you able to separate, like, working mom from, like, being a mom and being a business owner? Okay. I was ra- My mother worked her tail off. Mm-hmm. And when she – my mother was a sheriff. And when she retired, she started her own catering company. So during my early years, we have always worked with her. And then she started a cookie business, and we worked with her. She worked. Mm -hmm. And I felt that she missed a lot Mm because she worked so hard. But I understood and I understand why she had to do that. So for me, I wanted to, I did, I wanted my own company. But I also wanted to be hands on. So I was trying to figure out something to do that would allow me to still make money and work. And I had no problem with working. Yeah. But I wanted to be available for uh, my children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I, with Corey Porting School, that meant you had to go and uh, transcribe or, or dictate this transcript and then come home and write the book. Oh, mm, so it's a lot of your that. time. Right. So that, that would have been, and when I figured that out, because for some reason my brain wasn't on, and I was like, well, this doesn't work. Right. I want to come <laughs> home and be with my kids. Right. Like, I'm not coming home and working more. <laughs> so you're, at the time, your dad probably wanted to strangle me. But <laughs> he said, okay. And I went and I started doing marketing mm-hmm. for a court reporting firm. Oh. And it was a world that I knew. At the time, my older sister was a pair, well, she wasn't paralegal, but she was working in a legal firm. Mm-hmm. And she introduced us to this world, basically saying, hey, you guys, this is this is a good situation. And what yeah. is this world? The world of litigation. Okay. Litigation um, copying, basically. So just imagine a Kinko's. I always say an upscale Kinko's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine a Kinko's, but on the legal side. So if you know anything about mm. legal... There's a whole discovery process in the litigation world when that means when you're suing. So there's subpoenas, and you know, the court reporter, and then there's the discovery part with all the documents. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't foreign to me mm-hmm. because I was already in that court, court that reporting world. world. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, it felt like, okay, this is similar, and I could um, do this too. So having the service background... Um, really helped me and this when I say that from working with your grandmother in hospitality Mm -hmm. having the um 
Dis- All right, I keep trying to get you to get closer okay. to the mic. Having the discipline with court reporting. Because in court reporting, you're almost, you have to be almost per- perfect in writing down. Mm-hmm. So having that discipline, it has helped me with the business that I'm in now. Nice. I was thinking about when you were saying how Nana worked, you know, so much. And when I always like listen to stories about, you know, my mom's childhood and stuff. And one of the stories that always stood out to me was Nana talks about how she worked her ass off, basically. But she did it for, you know, her girls. Mm -hmm. She's a single mom. She did it for her girls. And I remember a story of she got a part-time job at Saks. Yes. Yep. So that her girls could be coming to I school love it. in the bomb outfits because you would get an employee discount. And I always remember that because I'm like, wow, like, she already had a full-time. Like, you know, she was already her working her ass off. Yeah. Yep. And in the back of her head, she's like, I need to make sure my girls are coming to school good. looking yeah. good. Like, yeah. It's like... You, you know, going above and beyond just the for, right, for, kids. Like, for her yeah. kids. I feel like she's instilled that into my mom, who's then instilled going Jesus. above and beyond mm-hmm. into us. And I think each generation has just taken it and ran with it. Um, so I think a lot of times people will say, like, we're extra or we do too much yeah. or we're dramatic. But it's like, this is what it, we want to do. Is, like, it's a learning lesson. It's My mom has been very intentional with, how she wanted to do things and how she mm-hmm. wanted to raise that and I uh, raise us. And I feel like she also gets that from Nana. Right. And it's, uh, my mom is always saying like, you know, we have to do better with each generation. So to echo what Cheyenne said, it's, it's, it's happening. Yeah. And it's, I, yeah. This isn't like an overnight thing with no. Cheyenne and I, this has been generations of, right. Of work. And, and I trial like and I can take from that too, because talking to Nana and hearing her tell me stories about how she worked her butt off and how to do sacrifices. And it made me want to be like, okay, I have to have these 500 jobs and it, my son will be okay. Yeah. Having that talk with her really, put my mind to a different gear i'm like okay my son's good people are watching him so yeah i've i felt that too yeah my mother is extraordinary yes and amazing we i always say this is my mother's first life (laughs) she was raised in a very very religious home where there was no television Mm -hmm. so when i went to my grandparents house we had to be creative Mm. there was no we couldn't watch tv but my mom also um, had a beautiful soprano voice mm-hmm. and sang for everybody. So I've learned a lot from her. And you'll see as a parent, and I don't want to jump ahead of the questions or answer. No, you're but kidding. Go for it. I've kind of mimicked her and made some corrections. <laughs> and not corrections, mm-hmm. but I but mimicked my took, mom. took some things and then made some things I'll, your own. Altered them. Yeah. Because I could see, as I look back on my life, I could see what she was trying to do and what mm-hmm. she did do right? and what her goal was. So I like that, and yeah. that's where I kind of... So I feel like one of the questions, and this kind of goes on what we're talking, talking about that I keep on seeing is, what is your parenting style? My parenting style would be open. <laughs> no when i say that open communication okay. no 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 babe open communication <laughs> i wish y'all could open. see Cheyenne's face right now i was not expecting okay. that one word answer <laughs> open. i thought she would say like hands on right no 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 no, no. involved I, you can be involved but still have no communication that's true that's very Hell, true yeah very true. okay so that is the communication and we talked about, we, you know, we... We, we talk a lot talk over here, about. y'all. Yes. <laughs> we talk too much. I've learned, no, it's good. Because I don't have that with my mom. And I love being able to talk to you when I have problems. Because you've helped me through so much. So I I love your openness. Well, I, you know, it's, okay. We are just larger versions of you guys. Mm-hmm. And you're just a younger version of us. The funny part, if you think about being a parent, you're not the age difference really is not that big, Much, yeah. you know. Yeah. So um, my mother had us when she was young. She was like 22. Mm-hmm. So 22, she, st- she started having kids like at 19, I think. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I was raised with my mother. Mm-hmm. You were learning with I her. I was learning with her. 
you guys, as parents now, I'm sure you can understand what I'm saying, that when I became a parent, I understood my mother so much more. Oh, yeah, for yes. sure. Mm -hmm. And I, I understood her so much more, and I could, I mean, I already had respect for her and admiration, but now I look at her and go, how in the world mm -hmm. did you do that? Yeah. And so I'm able to take all the pearls from my childhood and just dwell there because I saw what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I said, like, for example, when I was 10, my mother had gotten to the point in her career where she took us to our first, we went out of the country to Mexico. And we went for 10 days and we went to maybe five different cities oh, in Mexico. Yeah. And to me so, now, that's a, such a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, especially as like a single parent. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it was just her. It was four of you. Well, at that time, it was just the three of us. And no, my when mom. I say four oh, of you, yes. the three, right. three daughters and, and a mom. Right. That's four people. So I looked at that that's and said, lot. I want to travel. Yeah. So to yeah. me, I think that we as a human nature, we tend to dwell on the negative of our childhoods instead of dwelling with what our parents were attempting to do or recognizing that they're human too and mm -hmm. that they we are not perfect beings. But I try to focus in on what my mother, all the good times. Mm -hmm. And you were able to collect the gems. So you say that your parenting style is open. Would you say that that's a reflection of how you were raised? Like were you yes. guys open, raised in an open household? Yes. So we you were. could talk to your mom openly and be... You know Nana's open. Oh, yeah. hell yeah, y'all. I'm. I, we keep on saying we need to have Nana on the podcast, but I'm also very scared to have Nana on the podcast <laughs> because one question would just... She would just go on a roll a and roll. you don't know which way it's going to go. And it might honestly be like a 12-part podcast. Right. Yes. Or episode because she... Nana has lived so many lives. Yeah. She has so many life lessons. So um, much information. She is literally so much so information. Much. But like, she's also has that old people tendency where, where they have to start a story. They have to like finish, finish the it. whole story <laughs> or it's going to bother her. You know what I've noticed? So I'm, I'm, I don't know if we're ready for that yet. I can be really bad with telling stories because I'll tell like a super long version with all the details and Shannon will be like, but can you just get to the point? Yeah, yeah. I, I oh my gosh. Kyle yeah. is the worst storyteller ever. I don't I, care if y'all say it. Would it really be like a 30 second like nut, like here's a, a story in a nutshell? I'm like 30 minutes later. But you guys can tell Still that going. in Kyle's, uh, <laughs> her, what's it called? Her, what? underneath your picture. What is it called? I can't think. A bio her description? Comments. The comments, her not comment the comments. Section. Oh. Her, oh no, her caption. Her caption. Oh, you, you, oh, yeah, yeah, you can books. see her. She will tell a story in her caption. Zach always goes, here goes your sister with these goddamn <laughs> paragraphs. <laughs> but it is, it's like part one story, part yeah. two. And I'm like, oh. Every now and then I get a message for like a random DM and someone's like, sis, you just need a blog. We don't want to read all this on Instagram. <laughs> I agree. I, I'm so sorry. I skimmed through it and I'm your sister. It's okay. Mommy reads it. Thanks. Oh, I read it. We already knew you read it. No one was challenging that, Margaret. We already knew you did. I try my best. I can't lie. But some days I wake up and I'm like, okay, she should have just text this to the group. <laughs> I do I like too. To write. Oh my God. I skimmed through. It's I'm like, okay. I love Kyle. I, like I try to just myself. tell her, I'm like, you just have such a beautiful soul. Thank I you for sharing. I write for myself. That's the funny part. It's not even like I'm necessarily like. But you're a storyteller. Looking for. Yeah. I feel like, like I really am. Like you're Nana. A storyteller. Like Nana. Like Nana. <laughs> Shut up, Shy. <laughs> <laughs> sister love. Sister love. All right. I found another question I like, and I think it's kind of, let's see what your answer is. How was she able to raise two daughters that are so different, but they have one. such a close relationship and has a close relationship with both daughters? Yeah. I like that. Because okay. as a mom, one of the things I recognize is you could be raised in the same household and see to things totally different. Mm -hmm. You could be raised in the same household and be totally different. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to celebrate my kids for who they are 
and I, I and their dad was the same way. So I think we did a good job. We celebrated Kyle and her strong suits, and we did the same with Cheyenne, and just made a real effort. Um, they didn't try and put us in the same mold no. and mm-hmm. say like, "You guys come from the same parents, go do the same, same things. things." No, I feel like you really took the time to. Like I'll use school for an example. Shine and I went to different schools, and it's they took the time to understand. Like, okay, you know what? Our children maybe don't learn the same. Let's put them in environments that help um, them suit their learning styles. Or... Basically, I rode the short bus to school. <laughs> No, but didn't. Cheyenne and did not know she was Kyle on the short went bus to the fancy no. school, and they had to put me in this this okay. slow bus school. Okay, you know how there's A class and B class. I was in the C class. No, <laughs> so, that is not true. That okay. is so true. I can't believe you used that example. No, but I wasn't even trying to make it in terms of learning styles, but just like sometimes your kids. What? Okay, let me use let something me step else. in here. No, let me step in. <laughs> It's okay, in. Cheyenne. We's about to fight. My y'all. parents no. did the same thing for me too. Dang, girl, they took me out in the middle of the year. Mine too. It's okay. Cheyenne just got so sad. You guys, as a parent, one of our jobs is to recognize how our kids learn. Okay, it's real, and, and it's real. And and what are what we need to take the time to figure out what your what your specialties are and what your specialties are. I just use another word. Yeah. But the point is... This thing shines great at, and I'm terrible. Hey, don't try and clean it up now. No. No, but that's the truth. The thing is this, is that if you do that and celebrate each child, then you'll get what you... This is my result. No, I feel that... You understand? Yeah. I mean, I've, I have It's two, a real thing. It's, it's a real thing. You have to understand how your kid learns, how your kid thinks... You know, because they don't learn and think that we feel. My parents did the same thing. Um, they both put us in poly at the same time, and then they took me out of the middle of the year and put me to another school, and I excelled way better at that school than I would have at poly, because I was just they knew that I and I hated my I was so mad and I did not understand. But learning different than my brother, he finished and went to Princeton, and I do hair. <laughs> You do hair wonderfully, <laughs> Shan. <laughs> oh, that kidding. was funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> he okay. went to Princeton wait, and I wait, do hair. Cheyenne's on, Cheyenne's on TV and people think I'm her nanny. <laughs> and I was no, on the short bus, but I, y'all. I love what I do. Check me out now. Well, I, I went to a Baptist college for one year. Now. Everybody who talked shit growing up, look at me now. No. <laughs> no that was aggressive, I, y'all. Can I say one thing? That yes. It doesn't matter. Funny. Okay. And, and I'm not speaking on my kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. Parents need to understand. You may have a kid that is um, super smart, but doesn't apply themselves. And mm-hmm. and if Shy was always competitive. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she was competitive and going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kyle was a little bit more, you I know, was just, days of cold life. I was just really Kyle smart. I was in fairyland. And I was, then was like, <laughs> oh, my feelings. <laughs> yeah. So my point is learn your kids. Take the time to learn your kids. But then, you know, I was kind of a weird old mom. If you brought um, a gift for Kyle, I, okay, I was one of those moms and I see this all the time, never walk up to a group of kids and look at one kid and say, oh, that kid is cute. Right. Because what are you saying about the rest of the kids? Yeah. So my point is always share your comments or accolades with the group. Mm. Yeah. So I enforce that with my friends and family. You know. <laughs> they both cute. Love, your, <laughs> right. love, your, love all, both of them equally. Right. Or whoever else is standing there with we them. We all smart right. over here. No, that's okay. true. Don't bring so, one a gift and not the other. Don't yeah. bring mm-hmm. one. I mean, of course, on birthdays, it's going to be her birthday. But no, you know, even I on birthdays, <laughs> she's still now with Boz and Ryder. If it's one of their birthdays, we still get gifts for the, the other, other one. one. Yeah. So, Just something. But they're, because they're young. Now, yeah, they're going to be like, what? Right. So and I've, I know we've done this and we've actually posted in like some of the YouTube videos and people made comments like negative comments like, why are the other kids opening gifts when it's I think it was one of Boz's, Boz's first mm-hmm. birthday. They're like, why are the other kids opening gifts, too, when it's Boz's birthday? Like, let him have his day. Y'all, when one gets a gift, they all get a gift. We share over here. We don't. They're young. They're and young. They're still and learning. Yeah. So 
you know, we we do it how we want to do it. Yeah. So it I keeps think- it keeps it the mess down. Yeah, it, it keeps mm-hmm. the hurt feelings down, yeah, it and does. it's not like they're going to get the same amount of gifts as the birthday kid. But no, they may it's get, like one they or get two the compared one little to like card. fifteen. Right. Happy. Yeah, right. it's just a little something. something. It's just an I see you, Basically. and I think that is that's been something that's like attributed to our relationship. So being raised with um, two sisters, my mother always made us share. So it wasn't about this is my top, you can't wear it. This is my room, get out. You know, we gave them their privacy, but we raised them with a lot of love, um, and we made them share. We made them, I'm a very giving person, and so are they. We would tell them as a, 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 we would say don't tell on each other, because we wanted them to create a bond, a trusting bond, Mm -hmm. and have their own relationship. So we would tell Cheyenne because it was her doing everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys. one of the questions was like, "Who is the easier?" When I tell you, I'm so I was easier so to deal with on the greatest path of my life. Never did anything. Kyle was a banshee. I did everything, so Cheyenne didn't have to do anything. I really, was too scared to really do anything Kyle. because you you took you that away scared, from me, right? Just, I, just, I saw what my mom and dad were going through, and I'm like, I can't do that to them. But you made up for it in college. Hell yeah, I did. It was my time to shine. <laughs> it was my time to shine. <laughs> but we would tell the girls. That's hilarious. <laughs> do not tell on each other. Mm-hmm. And left it unless, unless it, it was, was life altering. Yes. So there were some occasions when <laughs> it when it was life altering. <laughs> Shia was like, "This is this is to know." Kyle, Shia would come and say, "You may want to go and look out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to look on Kyle's MySpace." You may yeah. wink, wink. When Kyle started getting all those damn tattoos everywhere, I was like, "Mom, you might want to look on her MySpace." And she had all these pictures of her bent over right. with her thighs out, showing her her tattoos yeah. to that's life altering right that's she, life altering so those, those are the times mom you may want to look in kyle's mouth right and i would go to kyle and say take that out of your mouth <laughs> be like mom you may want to see kyle in a bathing suit <laughs> me and terry went and got our belly buttons pierced uh, uh a mess so the good days but that was <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? But you funny? know what? I didn't. I never took it personally from Cheyenne, and I was never like I may have been annoyed in the moment, but I was never mad, mad. at her yeah. because like, I right. knew what the rule was with my parents. And there were times where like I would get in trouble, and my parents also had this rule of if you're ever in trouble or if you ever mm. need us, call us, and you will not be in trouble. Mm. And it, that created this relationship of an open communication because I you in trouble. It. Cheyenne has used it. Oh, yeah. There oh. Are times, you said, yeah. oh, yeah. No, there mm-hmm. was a time, um, this was, like, my first time, like, where I saw other people, like, smoking weed. Mm-hmm. And we were at this girl's house. <laughs> and then she was like, okay, y'all, we're going to take my mom's minivan and, like, drive somewhere. And I was, like, said, I was like, I need help. I was like, I'm not getting in that car. Like, I'm not doing that. Right. I called my mom. It was late at night. My mom came in a robe and her hair pinned up. Why do I remember this? I couldn't tell you where I was, but I described the area. My mom, okay, Cheyenne has stories like this, and I have stories where we have literally just described, like, there's a tree here. I saw a store. Yeah. And there's an in and out nearby. And she has found us. And Because back then, they didn't even have the... You know, no, Google it's Maps. Like, it's, we, we could not drop a pin. Okay, no. so and you weren't carrying around a Thomas guide with you. So it's, that part, we were literally describing things, and she would find us. And ninety percent of the time, we would just tell her what happened, yep. or we would tell my dad what happened. Mm-hmm. We'd get in the car and be, be like, like <laughs> <laughs> and they're just sitting there looking at us, like they would awesome. always tell on themselves. Is that yeah, yeah. They would tell I ourselves. love that. Just they would yeah. tell themselves. I remember the first time I like really drank alcohol and was kind of tipsy. I felt so guilty. So, uh, someone drove my car home, and I came home early. I was never. I was rarely on time for curfew. You were never. On <laughs> you were time never, for, never on time for curfew. <laughs> never. Anyways. This day, Anyways. this night, I got home at like ten o'clock, and I went and sat at the end of my parents' bed, and well, I was just, I was just talking, and they were like, "I think she drew." Oh, I looked at her, I looked at her dad and I said, "Is she slurring?" <laughs> <laughs> I felt so guilty, but I couldn't be like, "Hey, y'all, I drank some alcohol, and here I am, like feeling like a piece of shit." But I was like, 
I came home early and I went and told on myself. Well, but I think that's good parenting on you guys, though. Well, she didn't get in trouble because someone else drove her car home. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like you can't beat the child up if they're telling you, if they're doing the things that you taught them to do. Right. Then you want them to continue sharing because both their dad and I have, and we, as adults, we've been through what you guys are going mm-hmm. through. You know what I mean? We've been there. We were, you know, we were in a, we were, we were, we had fun. They're saints and sinners. <laughs> no. Oh my God. That's so, saints, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think y'all led by example in that department because you shared with us, you guys shared stories from your childhood, from your twenties, from your thirties, like, you weren't trying to portray some picture perfect person um, to us. So and and it, then what else did we do on Sundays? We watched Lifetime. Yes. We would all sit <laughs> oh, in the I bed and we would watch Lifetime movie um, So we were movie scared. Marathon. Scared of things yeah, we were too. scared of and things. You know, back then, like Lifetime movies were. When you're young. They were so scary to us. It would yeah. be like the girl went to the party and picked up a cup that wasn't her cup <laughs> right. and then got like roofied and then got yeah. sexually assaulted. My mom's sitting there like, that's what would happen That's if that was you happen. at the party. And, and there I'm, was, there I'm was sitting like, there I like, oh my this. God, it there was is, crazy. This, I'm it was like, crazy. I'm like, I'm never going to a party. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Kyle, there's keep a, going. There right. was a Lifetime movie where the girl was scared to call her mom when she was in trouble Yes, because the mom was that. very strict and was mm. kind of like, it, they didn't have that open communication. We were the opposite of that. So it's like, no matter if I was, no, I'm not saying I was in a back alley, y'all. But if I was in no, a back I, alley. I for sure got picked up in an alley. That, I know you have, Shy, but I haven't. <laughs> I for sure I know got you, picked up in an alley one time. Like, but it's like, okay, if we were in a back alley, if we were in a different city, if we were with a car, without a car, like, no matter what the situation was, like, my mom or my dad, they would pick us up, no questions asked. And it, it wasn't like a all hell was coming down. I think they were just happy that we... That you called. We called, yeah, we and called. And once they figured called. out that we would tell on ourselves, I think they, they were just like, they were all, like right, all right, come fine. on. Yeah. Let's, let's go we get our... Back there snickering going, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they so, let them tell us what happened. Right. This, we did. I feel this like, day, we still do. We still do. <laughs> this question, I feel like, goes really well with what we're talking about. So they said, since you're so close with your daughters, how do you navigate boundaries yes. when dealing with them and their significant others or how they are raising their own kids. Do you ever feel like you overstep? So before you answer, <laughs> okay, before you answer, I literally just saw somebody commenting on one of a, um, the YouTube videos like, Shai's mom is always at their house. Do they live together? And I'm like, someone coming back like, they don't live together. They're just way too close. And I wanted <laughs> to comment back close? like, why are y'all so mad? And then the next person said, Zach must always be annoyed. And I just died <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I think Zach is getting oh, used to goodness. us at the same time. Though. Zach knew what he was signing up for. Well, really you know what good. made me happy today? Okay, I'm going to answer the question first, okay. and then I'll tell you what made me happy. But, Okay. First of all, my daughters and I are super close. I love it, yes. But we work together. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. we we work together on, I work with them. Multiple projects. Multiple Multiple projects. And they have kids. We don't have, you're the grandparent. I'm the, yeah, so I'm there for the kids. But I try to be respectful. Like I tell Sean, I'm not coming over there today. I don't want to drive Zach crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, I know he doesn't want to look at me every day. So, I, I try to keep that in. Don't I say that No, to you? she says it all the time. I'm like, I don't want, you know, so I try. And if she doesn't say it to Cheyenne, she's looking at me going, am I doing too much? Aww. I, like, I mean, what I'm saying is that I know that that gets annoying. Right. Or yeah. could get annoying. So I try to stay out of their space mm-hmm. as much as possible. But it's hard when you work together. It's hard when, you know. You, you live know, eight minutes you, away from each right, other. Yeah. With the kids. Your grandparent. You. So it's more so... Um, we really rely on each other too. We we work we, we work close together, so that yeah. makes that's one thing. Um, but today, when Zach was, he made a funny when he sent a video, oh my god, <laughs> a picture, and he included me. So I sent, oh, Zach likes me. Aww. Zach loves you. <laughs> Zach, I've, I mean, you was, probably needed that reminder though, just well, to, or a little. Yeah. Zach it's knows hard. how close we are. And I always say, he always, it's just natural to him now where he'll be like, 
Who's coming over? Your mom or your sister? Or are they both coming? And uh, and it's like if they don't come, then he's like, what are, are they, they doing? At? Yeah. Like, where was everybody today? <laughs> or like if I don't call my mom first thing in the morning, he mocks me all day until I do. He's like, you know, you want to call her? Just do it. Just pick up the phone. Mom, mom, mom. Oh, yeah. Mom. That's like, Zach's mom voice. <laughs> he's like, just do it, Shy. Like, you, you're trying to avoid it just so I can, like, sneak <laughs> and do it. So I think that Zach appreciates our relationship and what people don't know or don't see is that the same way I'm really close with my mom, Zach is really close with his dad. Mm -hmm. So the same way I'm calling my mom all the time, him and his dad talk all the freaking time. Terry comes over all the time. So I think he just accepts our relationship and like this as is, soon as he needs a second with Ace, we're family. he's like, right, is, that's family. Is, is yeah. your mom coming today? <laughs> is your mom coming? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. She's busy. And he's like, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> can't be busy. Right. Then it's like, you can't have a life. So. Yes. I think. I what? think you've actually gotten better with your boundaries. Heck no, not when it comes oh. to the kids. Those no. are her oh, wait, kids. I was going to say My maybe kids. with uh, like, the other ones, but with the kids. That's a whole Basi- other topic. Basically, <laughs> Cheyenne and I had <laughs> children for my mother First in up, her eyes. My mom thinks she gave birth to Ryder. Like, that's how yeah. she acts. That's how I feel with Parker and my mom. Yeah. I'm like, excuse When you? Cheyenne was in labor with Ryder. <laughs> oh, my God, y'all. They had to give Cheyenne oxygen. They also had to give my mom <laughs> oxygen because she was also <laughs> she in labor. And she felt everything that Cheyenne felt. And it's okay, uh, That's not true. So they then why me, did they need to give you oxygen? Because she started, like, hyperventilating. And <laughs> so you started hyperventilating. So you started hyperventilating. <laughs> you like, oh, no. <laughs> like, the first time I cut my hair, my mom, you went to, you were in New York for, like, a week. I was in the 10th grade. I came home. I My mom, like, my mom did not let me do anything to my hair. I chopped my hair off, gave myself an A-line bob, and dyed it black. And my mom cried. And she cried talking about, you cut my hair <laughs> so it's like yeah you feel everything somebody actually asked that they asked how right. was it watching your daughters giving birth giving birth yeah extremely hard <laughs> <laughs> was it for you um it's you probably just because of your they're your kids yeah. and it i uh, you just you're just like baby get this get the baby out just get the baby just get it out it is hard to watch your kids in pain. that type of pain. That's yeah. all. And birth is such a traumatic experience, mm-hmm. but it's a beautiful experience. Right. So I totally enjoyed watching them, you know, give birth and and very proud of both of them. But it was it's hard. You'll see. Sure. You have a girl. Yeah. I, I know, Mom. You always tell me that. Anytime when it comes to, like, writer, <laughs> she's always like, just wait. Just wait. I'm like, I don't. Oh, my God. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I don't, don't want to see it. I don't it. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't want to experience yeah, it. I like, would I'm say, not like. even trying to think about that. I right had now. a traumatic. I think it was traumatic. First you did. labor with Ryder. And I think that was really hard for my mom to watch. In my whole pregnancy was not ideal and I I was the first one you know to get pregnant Mm -hmm. and go through all that and she went through that with me Mm -hmm. um and then to have the traumatic labor it was just like it was just a whole nother thing so I don't know I don't knock you for that I I I don't either I think it's very I try I think it shows how connected you guys are Are, yeah just how Zach had Zach had (laughs) pregnancy (laughs) symptoms while Cheyenne was pregnant with Ace Oh my and gosh. they were very connected. My mom is that connected to us. Like, I really, truly feel like as a mother, and I kind of understand it now, like when your child is in pain or your child is in distress or like it's something that you can't necessarily takes over you. bring comfort mm-hmm. or support, mm-hmm. it's that feeling of not being, of having any sense of control or not being able to do anything. Like, it's difficult. It hurts. It's difficult. It hurts. And let me just say this. Um, I am married, and my husband, we do like each other. We have date night, and sometimes the girl's like, well, you got to go to date night for it. We wanted to sit here and lay here and look at we you. We just want to look at so you. Yeah. It's not- I hate date night. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> when she's at date night, Cheyenne and I are just texting each other, talking mad shit, like, where's mom? Yeah. We want mom right now. 
Dave gets so mad when mom and I go to do like one errand. It would me be too. Like, I feel left we'll out. We'll be like, oh, we just too. have to run an errand. Hey, we're gone the whole day, y'all. We'll go he get our us. nails done. We'll go to lunch. We'll go shopping. Probably hate you. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Dave my wife at? When, they sneak when mom away and, I and they together. go and get really good meals. And I'm like, why didn't anybody say anything to me? You you don't want, we tell you to come on you don't yeah. come you, gotta you, come. you don't you don't Sometimes, come on you're stuck Sometimes in the I'm bedroom not. putting on fifty face moisturizers and doing whatever else you do Kyle takes the longest to get 50. ready and she has no hair and she does not wear makeup but this is so real and I'm just <laughs> like what are you doing she up there she lathers so much Kyle so will come out of her can I show you shining guys something? and glowing I'm like yes girl okay. bro Kyle's gonna turn into a bottle of face moisturizer. That sounds very expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> One day I was, I was like, how much did that cost? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mom went with me to, uh, we were at, uh, where did we go for a Smart and Final? And there was a Target right next to her. Yeah. And I was like, I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab one yeah. thing at Target. Man, Target began me. I went in there to get some prenatals. I walked out spending almost $300. Yeah, I was so confused. On, Mom was so mad. She stuff, huh? called me and yeah. told me. <laughs> Even Dave You know, you know what Kyle's me. nickname is, right? Hmm. What's my Mosier. nickname? Mosier. She's a Mosier. Oh, she's just she a Mosier. She's so Mosies. frustrating. Y'all, if there is one thing about me, I don't believe in time. Like, oh she really, gosh. I just be I, yeah. just on my own flow. Yes, my own and it, vibration. It, it drives us all insane. <laughs> but it they really still does. love me. Out to death. But they still love me. Shannon bought me some skincare stuff for my like, Why? She has enough. <laughs> and that's why I was at the store. I was like, actually, what can I buy Kyle that she will my, actually? I feel like I always buy her like candles and like incense. But I feel like she never. Uses them. She I probably. Do. Ooh, sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you don't see but them today they're done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no. But I did buy her face mask, Heck and I yeah. bought her things to like. What is it? What is it called? Um, like those stones right. to. I don't know what it's called, but some I know more it's shit to rub her face with. Yes. Yeah. I get to stop. Your face gonna fall off as much as times you rubbing on it. <laughs> Ew, who snorted? Her. No, me. that was shit in me. Oh, was it you? <laughs> I did snort. Wait, okay, wait. Someone, I think this is kind of a good playoff. The question, Ooh, sorry. they were talking right. about what is the pack the three of us have. Um, Do you guys have a pack? Mm. According it's to like the a, men in our life. It's yeah. not a pack. It's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's, it's like, actually it's a, a pack. Let's it's be not honest. It's verbal, Shy. We haven't verbal. We haven't actually discussed pack. ever it having a pack. It doesn't need to be verbal. Why are you guys acting like we don't have one? Oh, I was going to say we definitely do, but we've right. never actually what like sat down and discussed what is it. it? It's us know. against the world. Don't exactly. try to come for us. <laughs> we are very protective Literally. of each other. If you come for one... You could say, you could just look at one the wrong way. The other one's going to be like, why are you looking like that? And the other one's going to say, you better watch out before I pluck your eyes out. Like, we're literally, like, we are very and nice, you gracious And you seriously people. don't play. So but we will we will fight you if you come for us. Zach like, says I argue like my mom. He says that when we yep, get yep, yep, set yep, yep, off, yep, yep, we're yep, yep, yappers. Yep. We hear one thing we don't like, and it's a, a yeah, 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 yeah. And then he said, your mom comes up like, a yeah, 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 yeah. and then he goes, your sister's not far behind talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, if you don't shut up, Shannon. we are actually very mellow people. We yeah, are. until we get upset, until we're just wait, there. until you guys get upset, you guys will have this look. And I'm all shit. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. But we we just want. But it's people super to be chill. Nice. <laughs> we just want to be right. Everybody be right. Do the right and thing. Not right. right. The, the three right of us thing. like we're none Act of us right. are confrontational. It's not at all. Like no. we're not looking for drama. We're not looking for beef. Like not no. But at you all. guys will be very like you guys we will no give people issues. Silent treatment. But if too. somebody oh heck yeah <laughs> you face you sin. If you if you cross one of us, You're um, crossing all. Just you know be ready. It's not very good. Be ready. It's not. It's Be ready. Not Even my dad, dad all your my dad questions. to this day yeah, talks Mom, about it. You're answering the questions great. Okay. I like this one. What do you think of all of the dads as far as our baby daddies? <laughs> Start from the top. Okay. <laughs> Who's the top? I don't know. I don't no, know. I'm just going to make a general statement. I try to be respectful and have a good relationship with all. I really, I really do, um, because I want to be in the kids' lives, mm -hmm. and I don't want, I just don't want any confrontation. So, yeah, that's my 
That's what I try to do. You know, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> after that pack. <laughs> However, if you do something against that, she may look at you and be like, K -k 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 -k. "How no, about that?" No. Okay, really. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I try to stay out of it. Hey, do I not? Yeah, you do. She does. I, I do. I try to stay out of it because I want to be a neutral party. Because I, I respect all the guys. They're all great dads, and I'm thankful. So I'm just here as a support system. If I ever get out of line, that's because they got out of line. But <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't really happened. But you understand what I'm saying. I really try to, to stay mutual. Right. Mm -hmm. And I try to give the girls the best advice. Um, and I want to be a neutral, supportive party. I, I really do. Because I want <clears throat> to be involved with the children. Yeah. I also feel like you try and give us. You said you give us good advice. You give us advice. You try. You've had a lot more experience than us. Mm -hmm. And you try to keep us very level headed, I would say. Like I do my you, best. You really do. And I appreciate that because I know I go, I come to y'all all the time for like, hey, how would you respond to this? Or how would you go about this? Mm -hmm. And it's. um, And you're getting much better. Oh, yeah. That. You're doing much I am, better. Because y'all, I used to. I would like, you know, I'd want to pop off. I would want to pop off. And I feel like I've, I'm not pop off queen anymore. More respond, like you're not responding. Right. Yeah. We, I, like I said, I all the try. dads are very hands on, good dads with their kids. I appreciate that. So I really do. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Um, Ashley says, Why are we saying name? I don't know, because that's, you know, everybody has all these fancy Instagram names. So I, I said, I, I can, can read, read this one. <laughs> Ashley Aaron said, I would love to hear how she feels about the whole filming situation. Oh. <coughs> Cheyenne choked on her <laughs> own question, y'all. Oh, sorry. my God. I'm Lord sorry. Mercy. Oh, got a snorter and a burper. Even Ace was like, ew, mom. Oh, <laughs> it went down the wrong path. Okay. Ashley Aaron said, I would love to. I would love to hear how she feels about the whole filming situation and how does she really feel about Zach coming back into your life oh, that's, for sorry, that's a second shame. time. <laughs> I was eating bad jelly beans today. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they did the bean. So how do you feel about boozled. filming, Mom? Um, the filming is fun. The filming is fun. Um, like it gets a little... Right, I'm like, can you... No, it's... Can you, can you, can okay, how do can I say you this? elaborate? I can. Um... How do I feel about the filming? How do you feel? How do you feel about us being on TV? TV? It gets a little overwhelming at times. It's still new, and as the girls get, it, it is still kind of new because as you get more notoriety, I don't know how to even say it. I mm -hmm. it gets people get a little bit more intense. Mm -hmm. So the comments, the negativity is hard, and the unpleasant comments. It's hard from the standpoint of I don't want you guys to read that stuff. Yeah. So I'll be happy the day comes when we're, you, I know you're getting better at not looking at it, but I think that's the hard part about filming. Um, is what comes with is it. What, is what comes with it. And you can't protect, I feel like probably you can't right. protect her or Kyle from right. the comments. Unfortunately, yeah. people are mean. Yeah. And, um, and confident in their mean meanness. Yeah. I, so mean. This is this is like new territory to me. I've never been one to just be like, let me just go and try and be you know, shit just on your right. day. You like, know? No. I Which think is that's really hard because that's difficult. For me, it was different when I did like Are You the One? And then when I did the challenge, it was still different because the negativity was just, you know, about me being bad on the show or something. Right. Or like, you know, it was geared towards me. But geared towards like show related stuff, yeah. right? But Where, not to your right with Teen character. Mom. I don't think I truly knew what I was signing up for, and not only signing up for within myself, but signing my family up for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because now I've opened the door for them to have something to say about me, about my mom, we're about, all, my about all, everybody, we're all yeah, about everybody's kids, about our parenting styles, about where we live, the cars we drive, the food we're eating, who works, right. who doesn't work, who got shoes on, who doesn't have shoes on. It's like. Everyone has been exposed, and I wasn't prepared to take that on. 
where like with the other shows I've done, you know, it was, it it was, was just me. geared to you. Right. This is now, you know, people have something to say about every little aspect and every little person that they see come into our lives. Mm-hmm. And people are really bold. People I mean, I mean, have my really friends bold. who send me messages like, Shy, your fans are out again. Like, and they'll be sending my friend stuff. And it's like, why do you have that much time on to, your hands to <laughs> go after me, but to try to go through people, people that you've seen me with? It's just a lot. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's a lot from, to handle. Well, from that standpoint, it's overwhelming. But from the standpoint of a job perspective, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, during the pandemic, I, it was it kept us busy. Yeah. It yes. Did. yes. <laughs> Thank you, God. It, it did. I can and like, it, yes. I, Thank, I Thank the Lord. It. Thank you, um, Diane. I raised my girls to do something different. And so they are. I, so I'm proud. I'm proud. Um, we're going to have highs and lows. That's life. But it's exciting. It's yeah. fun. I'm fine with it. We have tough skin. I just want to make sure that the negativity doesn't influence or hurt my daughters or my grandkids. Mm-hmm. And from that standpoint, that's a little weird that people are so involved. <laughs> So to, involved. to the point where you just can't watch it and say, hey, that was okay, fine. But you right. got to say something you have to rude. Say, yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's a lot of weirdos out there. Dig deep. They dig deep, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's it's really, the exposure is very interesting. Because we've always kind of been like private people and yeah. like really to ourselves. Just kind of like growing up, it was work hard. Shine and I were in school. We would go on vacation. So it's like we were never really like attention seeking. Um, we're a little exposed now. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a little. Just oh my even God. with Shane oh being on TV, it's like I've had someone say like, "Oh, you you just want to be like around fame and all this stuff," and I'm like, mm-hmm. "That Not really is, that is the right. complete that's opposite." My sister. <laughs> no, that's Shane's not even seeking fame or right. trying oh, to be no, around. Oh yeah, like, yeah, right. No, I no. never try. I never thought this would be my life or not, thought never, I would be no. on TV. Never. Mm-hmm. None of us were ever like. Let's, you know, growing up in L.A., you hear so many people, you know. I think you get turned off. Or in so many industries, and you see, like, the behind the scenes. So I think that always kind of, like, deterred us from like, wanting right, to pursue whatever. those things. Yeah. And it's funny because in my older years, a lot of people I meet who are out here who want to be actresses or want to be singers, and they're doing all these casting calls. I remember I was working a job, and people were like, "Why? oh, what do you want to do? Like, what? when do you go on casting calls? And I was like never <laughs> and they were true, though. they were like they were looking at me like i was some alien like they were very confused and this was before we were on teen mom and then teen mom happened and they were like wait a minute the the girl who isn't looking for anything you know or her sister who wasn't doing any of that stuff is now doing reality happened. tv like it, just, it you know, really just, it's just happened. happened it wasn't they it i wasn't, remember the first day you know. Kyle, i was like shh my sister's gonna be on Team Mom. Yeah, <laughs> it just literally happened. And we had no idea what was gonna happen. We had no idea that it would go on this long. That, um, that even us as like the outside family would be so involved in the process. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, but it's um. But we're having but fun. But people love yeah. you. And we, we're having fun. Is that we're okay? We're having fun. Yeah. Right. And we fun. like the fact that we get to show, like, a different side of, like, a black family. Basically. You know, we, it's I don't really get to see black families who are similar to ours on television, mm-hmm. um, especially reality TV. It's usually very, like, you know, we have drama, but that's not our life. No. Like, that's not our full story that's line, what you, you see know? all the time from black families yeah like we're very like hard working we're yeah. educated over here we're exposed we like each other like we actually we're i would say we're very like we have our dysfunctional moments but we're a very functional um precise chaos as you family say. yeah precise <laughs> chaos you know it's um yeah it works it does work do you want to answer the second half of ashley aaron's question which was it <laughs> I just like her name. I'm sorry. Um, how do you really feel about Zach coming back into our lives? I love Zach. Zach's family. Um, Zach holds a special place in my heart because mm-hmm. he was there with Cheyenne during her pregnancy with Rye. And we're going to take a quick break. Anna Louise. 
Luisa was founded to bring clarity to the jewelry industry. They design pieces with a beautiful story from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible, transparent business practices always, and in small batches that are kind to the earth. Ana Luisa is of exceptional quality, long-lasting pieces crafted with care from the best noble metals. They make limited batches, ensuring the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste. Ana Luisa has fair prices. Jewelry starting at $39, no luxury markup. They have a new jewelry collection released every Friday. Ana Luisa is carbon neutral. They offset 100% of their carbon emissions, starting with the sourcing of their raw materials all the way to the disposable. I just ordered a piece from Ana Luisa. The piece is called Scarlet and they're double hooped earrings. I'm super excited to wear them out. Go to Ana Luisa, A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash Think Loud Crew and treat yourself and your loved ones and use my code Think Loud Crew to get 10% off. I absolutely recommend them. They are a great brand making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. Again, analuisa.com slash thinkloudcrew, code thinkloudcrew to get 10% off all products. And now we're back. Um, Zach is very special to me because Zach is a true friend. And a supportive person to my daughter. And he was very instrumental in helping her through her first pregnancy. So, Zach is great. Shout out to Zach. Zach. Shout out to Zach. And I, you know what? I always taught my daughters. (laughs) I I told my girls to (laughs) find. Okay, let me. To. They didn't have to go marry the rich guy. I always promoted them getting someone and building their lives together. So. That was the way I thought. And so it's it's yours. It's it's ours. It's not just his or hers. You know, get somebody, figure it out, work together, build your life. And I like that. Yeah. So talking, we've talked a lot about, like, our lives and stuff like that. I think a lot of people are interested in knowing, like, about you and Dave. Dave, yeah. Yeah. And how you found, yeah. Dave is my husband. Girl, you said that already. We know. <laughs> I love Dave. Okay, so Dave. I love Dave. I love Dave. <laughs> David and I knew each other in junior high school. So. He um, didn't pull up to the fire that night. No. <laughs> no. He missed the boat. Sorry. He missed the boat. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> but Dave, holds, he always held a special place in my heart. It was a group of kids. I moved around a lot as a kid. Mm-hmm. And. There were a group of kids that I met, and Dave was among those kids, like the Auntie Rhonda, and they always, Martin, they always held a special place in my heart because they were just nice people. Aww. So Dave and I met when I was going through my divorce, and um, here we are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mom. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. Y'all, Somebody let's... said, how? When the girls first met Dave, did they oh, instantly no. click? When I, no. <laughs> when I saw that question, I instantly laughed to myself because Cheyenne was like the she 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 <laughs> lived up to the stereotype of like the evil <laughs> stepchild. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Cheyenne uh, gave David hell for yeah. years. Yeah. Probably like five five years. I think Dang it was girl, five years. Well, luckily, she was in school for part of that time. Yeah. So she just get hell over the really phone. just be hell over the summers. She would just come home and terrorize. I'd come home and terrorize. Like, and it'd be like, and I would just be sitting there like, but he's just so nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice man. He's David. David Very gave nice me a whole different idea on what a man can be in a woman's life. Mm. Um, in terms of, like, a lover and... Dave is genuinely probably one of the nicest this people. He's I've very ever nice, met. yes. And it's just so irritating. Yeah, sometimes. he's very giving. <laughs> it's so irritating. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't go away, you big old mush pot, 
He's just, ugh, he's just so in love with her. It's yeah. like. He's gentle giant. And he's he very really, gentle. it's one of those things where it's, he really likes my mama. Oh and my I God, really like does. him. So be, a little, we have six kids <laughs> between us. I Dave had like, four. Shine, just be nice. And I had Bro, two. I'm nice to him now. Oh, no, we're all great now. Mom's, mom's like, you guys, mom's like let, me finish, let me finish talking about my man. Right. Okay, go. Go. Yeah. So <laughs> we are a, a blended family. It is not always easy. We have a lot to deal with still, but um, Dave and I like each other. <laughs> yeah, that's what we matters. Just, we just like, keep going. Uh, he's get along. Wait, Basically, somehow. she's saying all y'all kids can fight, but me and Dave still like each, yeah. other. like each other. When there's disagreements, Dave will look at my mom and be like, "Just look at me, baby. Just look at me. <laughs> like, just stay here. Stay focused. It's stay like, focused. It's me and you. It's, it's just us. Just them. I swear. Block out the noise. Block out the noise. I always say, if like the world's ending and Dave's on a boat, who would he save? And he would look right to my mom and look at all of us and say, you guys can swim. (laughs) You'll be fine. But I do always say if it was my mom was on the, the boat. Water, oh my God. If my mom was on the boat and we're all in the water, she's only saving Ryder and she's going to say, everybody else is good. That's <laughs> Ace, not true. Float on your back. No. <laughs> float on your she back. Said float she on your back. True. We said she would get Ryder and she'd be like, Kyle, get everybody else on the Literally, boat. <laughs> she's saving Ryder. I'm, not true. Mom, you and know my, it's true. Ryder would be like, uh, Grandma, I'm right here. I'm telling you. I don't know if it's because Ryder's the first grandchild. <laughs> Is. And, and it's because the she's girl. the only girl. But when Look I tell y'all, y'all. <laughs> she's only saving Ryder. I swear, even if there was more room on the boat, she would be so focused on if Ryder was warm or like if she was wet or something. What? Like she's gonna <laughs> try to dry her off before any of us get saved. Our I mom. love all of my grandkids the same. But she loves that. Ryder the most. That is not true. Yes, it is, Mom. Okay, when are you gonna accept it? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> let's just Next say question. Ryder and grandma have a very very special but oh I'm my gosh close yes. with all my babies you know that you are very you close are. with all them anytime boss gets mad at me or i don't give him something he wants he's like where's grandma yeah that's <laughs> then Ryder. first like, off i basically have shared custody with not only Corey <laughs> but with my mom like yeah half of the time where i actually have Ryder with me it's a okay well we're literally negotiating between <laughs> our, when she's gonna actually stay at my house like yeah. stay at home versus when she's going to stay at grandma's and i'm basically bribing her to stay home and she's like okay so i'll do today here but tomorrow and the next day i'm going to grandma's <laughs> and i'm looking at her like why first off who are I'm you your parent. Like, who are you and my mom is sitting right there like come on ready come with me i'm like oh my god she's never gonna stay here and Ryder will have a full on meltdown cry oh end of the world ugly face (laughs) waterworks I just want to go to grandma's house. I know every time Ryder's skipping up them stairs to come to your house, Dave is probably kicking something. Because he knows that Ryder's coming to get in that bed with (sighs) y'all. But she melts his heart too. She goes, Papa. She does. Papa. She knows. She really does. Which I think is beautiful because it's like Ryder and Dave, Boz and Dave have very special relationships. Yeah, they do. And I think it's great because when you guys got married, Dave really took on this attitude and this persona of like, y'all are my kids too. Mm-hmm. So even with the grandkids, he is Papa Dave. You can't tell him those aren't his grandkids. No. That gentle giant would turn into just like Hulk. Yeah. And Yeah, he, Dave has only screamed at me one time. And that was because Cheyenne kept losing her house key. And I would purposely lose on purpose. the on purpose. house key to their house on purpose. And I think I like, went through about like 13 of them by the end like, of it. I, don't have, no. I would be Ridiculous. ringing the doorbell 3 a.m., 4 a.m., calling her like, yeah, let oh, me God, in. Oh, God, when you came back home from school? Yeah. I was, I was wild. <laughs> I would terrorize them, terrorize so, them. No, no, I think and it was each time Dave raised his voice Dave, twice. Though. Each time Dave would go and buy me a new house key, and I'd lose it again. So now they got a keypad on the door. So yeah. that my house key excuse didn't work anymore because now you just press the buttons, right? But I remember this one night. It was like the last Shame night I did so it, funny. and I, mom had to let me in, and it was super, super late or early in the morning. I don't know, but it was late. You know what I mean? And Dave was at the. I can literally picture him at the top of the staircase 
And I'm at the bottom talking my shit. You know, I got your asses again. Let me in, bitches, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and and literally, like, Dave was at the top of the staircase like the giant Hulk. And I said something to mom like, um, you know, my bad. I didn't have the key to your, oh, no, to David's house. I would always call it David's house. Mm-hmm. And Dave <laughs> stood at You're the so top terrified. and he was like, this is your house, too. It was like, this is like Sparta. You know what I yes. mean? He was right. And I literally looked up and I all I could say is, Yes. Yes. Okay, it's my house. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna my go. room now. <laughs> okay. I was so petrified. He probably shocked you. you said, oh, oh let my me God. stop losing yeah. my keys. Because I would always say David's house. Mom, are you going to David's house? Like I would mess I would always mess with him because I knew it pissed him off. Ooh. Those were the, those days were fun. I'm sorry. <sighs> sorry, Dave. But I had hell of on those days. Y'all, David really loves my mama because I know right. Cheyenne and I are not the easiest <laughs> people to deal with all the time. And he deals with us all the, all time. the time. And it, this is before grandkids. Like he, But it's like he genuinely has helped us. Whether yeah. it's like, yeah. Dave, um, I, don't, I have to put a screw in the wall. Can you come help me? Like... Dave has bought us tool sets, shown us how to use the tool sets. But anytime it comes to needing to use the tool set, he still comes and does the tool set. So it's like... Dave's a nice man. No, Dave's a really nice he guy. Is. And I think seeing um, seeing how Dave is with my mom, like you said, Kyle, it made you see a different side, you know, to how, like, a marriage or could be. Not knocking, you know, my my dad and my mom's marriage, I saw different things from them. And yeah, then I saw very different. Yeah, and then I saw different things from my mom and Dave. And I was like, hey, like, how can I combine those two? Yeah. Like, I want a guy who's going to, you know, drool all over me and be all, you know, mushy and stuff. But at the same time, I want a hustler. Like, I want somebody who's going to go out and make some money and be a provider and be a protector. It's like, can I merge those? They, they, those? they provides and protects. Yeah. yeah. I'm not no, saying that he saying doesn't. doesn't. Okay, but you said it like a ruler and a provider. Like a <laughs> no, Dave is a saying. provider also. I'm not saying that. But I'm you're saying, saying what Dave is a lot more like lovey-dovey. Yeah. And dad is a He's lot more, more like business. Like business man. Yeah. Business. Yeah. 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 Is that not true? Next question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, I don't think that's bad that's to say. That's not bad to say. The, I really don't think that's bad to say, though. But I think you're, yeah, taking you have, you're taking it as a negative. You're taking it as a negative. Shine and I also saw a different relationship with you and Dad where you guys were working. All I saw was business. a working it was, relationship. It was more, no, and that's right. true. That's true. Yeah, that's it was, growing it was up, we grew up in, in, in the office. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. all, we, all we really saw was you guys always working. Like I know, huh? Yeah, I cannot recall a time where, like... You guys didn't have date nights, how... Right. Now you and Dave have, you know, a date, have date nights night and consistent so date it, nights. It showed yeah. us a different... It showed me a different side. Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. Is, I think you're taking you it the Did you see a different way. side of your mom and how she was in the relationship? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen my mom melt yeah. until Aww. David. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think- so that probably made you feel, like... Like you said, that's what yeah, you probably you know. wanted in a relationship. You right, and that's what I saw. I'm like, okay, now I see a different side where, like, mm-hmm. you can be business-minded and, and you can melt me. you can melt me. Yeah. <laughs> you can make me melt. And I, and I get that. My I mom. Get that. Do you get what David, I'm saying? Yeah. Made me want to be more in touch with my femininity. Mm-hmm. Like, it made me want to be a soft, like a softer person, a softer woman in that sense. Whereas I feel like, you know, with, with you and dad 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 is he's loving but he's like tough love at times and he shows his love in different ways right so it's like it pushes you to like i don't want to say become hard but it's like it pushes you to like keep going you're always like well like you said you saw dad and i build a business yeah Mm -hmm. so we were you know what's funny and that's hard i didn't really feel think of myself as an organized structured person but we did have structure you did yeah. you know mm-hmm. what i mean so it was like it was the routine. kids it was routine it was we got to go to work it was like you got to get gotta home get to cook dinner things. yeah but I mean, even when we're at at the dinner table and we would eat dinner at together. the dinner table together you guys are still talking about business work and yeah. business and it was a 24-hour business so there were yeah. times where they're on call yeah, they're all on day call. yeah my mom, my mom had a pager, and to me it was always funny because people would be like, "Oh, your mom has a pager. She a doctor or something." Like you know, growing up, mm-hmm. 
The only people I know who had pagers were doctors and, you know, hustlers. Um, <laughs> I said I want to. Did you not get what I was saying? You right. know, there were times where they're, they're, the pager would go off in the middle of the night and say there was a, a case. They had a case. They were doing copy work for a case. And, you know, they had to update like an appellate brief or something. And they would be in the office at two in the morning. But the other thing is. My mom would be back at 7.30 or 7.15 to take take us back to school, take us to school. Make your lunch. And she would go to the office. So it's... um, I saw you guys. Y'all were working. Asses off. And you did it together. No. And I'm not knocking that. I love that you were able to build something together. And I think you've always taught us that, like, find a mate that you can build something with. But I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong... If you could go back or if you couldn't, I feel like now you're instilling in us, like, find someone you can build with, but find someone who can love on you. Yeah. At yeah the no, same definitely. Time. Yeah. Right. Definitely. We were, you know, your dad and I got together young. So you guys can, you know, as I say, do better than your parents. Mm-hmm. And when I say do better, that's not that. It's just learn. It's just, just learn. learn from. Watch, watch what, just do better. I mean, mm-hmm. as p- parents, we make tons of mistakes. So you're learning on you know, the way. Don't judge us. <laughs> Just learn from us and um, do better. You're gonna have you're gonna make your own mistakes. You're gonna have your own life lessons. We cannot protect you from, from everything. From everything, Mm-mm. but you can just have a do something different. Yeah, we'll try to help guide you. You can, you know, but it's Sweet not things. it's not easy. It was it was hard on your dad and I because we were we were we, our life was just all over the place. We had two kids in school. We were building a business private it was school a very at that. Strict, yeah. it was a very hard business it was a lot of work very demanding, very demanding. but mm-hmm. i think we did okay because you guys are awesome. thriving i think you did great. i'm gonna say i'm not gonna say i think i know you guys did a great <laughs> you guys job did amazing job. you were able to do what you wanted to do for your daughters mm-hmm. you were able to do what you wanted to do as a couple even though it was you know it may have not been how you wanted to, to feel at the time you guys still did it you yeah. know we traveled you put us in the schools you wanted to put put us into you bought me pizza we were, every friday at school yes you were <laughs> you okay you had your business and you figured out a business to where you were still able to be that hands-on mother that you wanted to be you dropped us off at school you came to all of our sports events all our dance concerts all our singing concerts whether it was in school or an extracurricular activity, you were there. And that wasn't just you. Dad was there, too. And you cooked dinner just about every, every night. night. Yeah. Um, well, I, to go back on the business tip, I did want to say one thing. My mother worked because she didn't have a mate. Mm-hmm. So luckily, I did have your dad. And my mother was living with us. Remember that? Yes. Mm-hmm. So we were able to be more flexible. But we also sacrifice and put our money where we thought it was important. So we didn't drive fancy cars. Mm-hmm. Nope. We, there were things that we did not do. And it just, it, I remember somebody said, why don't you buy a new car? And it's like, why don't you mind your business? <laughs> 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 Meaning don't, 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 judge, me on, judge. don't, don't judge me judge. on my car because I have other things going. Yeah. Right. So you, some, you know, we were building a business, or, but our kids were in great schools. We, we traveled. Now I wanted to speak on more. So if you do choose to go the entrepreneurial route, there are sacrifices you have to make. Yeah. And you may have to, you don't, there are sacrifices you have to yeah. make. Meaning we didn't have fancy cars. We, um, chose to spend our money on our family as far as traveling or schools mm-hmm. or extracurricular activities. And I think that's important to note that you do have to pick and choose. Pick, yeah, but now you bought the fancy cars. Well, I didn't get a car until my kids grad. <laughs> I didn't get a car until they were out of high school. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, like a sense car that I liked. That you liked. Yeah. But I think that makes a lot of sense. The question is, what person had what personality traits do you see in your? Oh, the one that you see in your daughters that you know that come from you, or just the ones that you in a, that you like. Um, You're both very compassionate. She has emails. Anyway, I'm just I like all of that. Thank you. I, think like, <laughs> I oh, like all that. I like all the questions. I love that you guys are giving <sighs> compassionate people. I believe you're very humble. I believe that you guys, you know, I didn't I didn't raise you guys to be designer kids. I would dress them across the board in everything. 
So meaning if they did go that route, they, I didn't, you know, they'll, they'll go to Target and buy clothes. They'll go to, they don't mm-hmm. care. So, I mean, that I love that. that However, Cheyenne <laughs> and my mom like to sneak away and go shopping. I'm not a big shopper, but they are. But the point is, is that <laughs> we don't, you know, as long as it works, I buy stuff at Target. Yeah. You yeah, didn't raise us stuff. like you didn't raise us no. in a material to be like materialistic really at no. all, and no. I did because I didn't want that for you. Mm-hmm. Um, we all not, like nice things, but that's not the main focus. Mm-hmm. I like that, and the biggest things that I would tell all parents is teach your kids responsibility. We, at some point, we have to be responsible for ourselves, and at some point, mm-hmm. we have to be responsible for our lives and and the decisions we make, and that and that's not at my age. That starts now. I mean, that starts Mm -hmm. early on. Teach a kid how to take responsibility. I think that's one of the biggest flaws is that we always want to pass the buck to somebody else when it's, you know, it's on us. I think that's one of the reasons why we're, you know, you and I are so close in some ways is because you do hold me accountable and you do make me responsible, whether I want to hear it or not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) call BS. That's not true. That's not true. Okay, let me yes. just say one thing. My Girl, mom and dad I is in the next room over. Don't make me bring him in. My dad, my mom and I have a very codependent relationship. Yes. At times. So what are you talking about? <laughs> she holds you accountable. I do. No, but we've gotten mm, no. We've got we have gotten better. so much better. <laughs> yeah, don't let them, they, we've gotten much better. You guys hear them? But don't <laughs> even. Uh-uh. We, we used to be toxic as shit. Let's not even. Now we're just like we're just a little. Uh, as Cheyenne likes to say, but yeah. we have gotten better. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we have, no, no, and we. I can't sit here and let you lie to the people like that. That's not a lie. We've 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 really like gotten better. We call okay. each other out on things more okay. rather than like she calls me out. You yeah. call me out too. Kyle, you don't let nobody hold. <laughs> Kyle, be quiet. Y'all, y'all messed up my responsibility question. Right over here trying to act like. You- Kyle, you Kyle's okay over there? Unscrunch your face. <laughs> you okay? I'm calling you out. How about that? Y'all, I you just want okay you to know there? I'm the biggest brat in the room. The biggest brat. Everybody thinks that I'm the brat. <laughs> the biggest brat is right here. I'm spoiled. and I. Y'all love to say I'm the biggest brat. So spoiled oh, to no. the point where He's I didn't like, even no, know no. that I was spoiled. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So for me to say (laughs) that my mom, we are working on it and it has been a work in progress over the last, you know, five years. Um, (laughs) Keep working at it. That's all I'm going to say. You know, I'm proud that you're admitting I'm proud of you. Oh, yeah. And it it took me a minute to even understand how spoiled I really am. I still don't think you know that you're spoiled. I'm I'm getting it. (laughs) You know, well, my mother and I don't like to say spoiled. We say loved. She said, yes. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. They're just loved. <laughs> Look at it. I wish, okay, if you guys do not watch our YouTube, I'm telling you, watch She's the YouTube here. because you have to see Ooh, Kyle's reactions to things in her face. You're turning red because I'm calling you out. Okay? So red and her face is just on pause. I am. Yeah. What? You're just a spoiled. Oh, but I know that. Okay. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. You know you're spoiled. Yeah. And Kyle doesn't but know not, she's spoiled. Not spoiled. Less she's love. loved. Okay, love. whatever you want to call it. I know that I'm it. Now, my big sister here, does she know? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're working on it. Five years in, working on it. I'm getting hot and flustered. I'm happy that you admitted it because I was about to call Mr. Floyd in here to say, he would have shut us all down. No, so, I'm not trying yeah. to do that. Like, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> don't do that. Exactly. So you keep working at that, girl. I'm mm-hmm. spoiled too, Kyle. Okay. Anyways, yeah, mom. Shannon, Shannon is all up in there. Do you yeah, know? we're all up in here. <laughs> yeah. I've been spoiled by y'all. <laughs> and your parents. And your parents. Mom. I'm spoiled. We're all spoiled. What Uh-oh. is the best too advice spoiled. that you, you that would Biggie, give sorry. to okay. another girl mom? Or just like for someone who's raising daughters. Girls. Raising girls. Um, Go ahead and read their social media. <laughs> go through their books. <laughs> I have to tell their their journals. Look at the journals. (laughs) I really believe that you have to be all up in your kids Kool Aid. -Aid. But the funny part, look at my emails. I'm like, girl, we had no privacy. I, I, me neither. (laughs) Okay, I had more doorknobs on my doors. 
I was, I guess I used to lock my doors and I was like, you know, no locked doors. Yep. So then they took away my doorknobs First and off, your computer. They took away all the doorknobs. You know who you know who talks about that all the time is Zach. There was the one time he went, he went to, to shut the door with you guys. No, no, no. The one time he went to Porter, which is where we used to live growing up, and he was taking me to um, the Pasadena Rose Ball. Mm-hmm. It's like a big dance party or whatever. And he was going to meet my dad. And he said he remembers going to the bathroom, and someone was in the front bathroom, so he had to walk through the hall oh, to, to get to the other bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I guess my dad said he can use the middle bathroom because that was Kyle and I's bathroom. Mm-hmm. And he said he got there, and he's like, what the hell type of house is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he's like, I passed what looked like your room, and then I passed what looked like your sister's room, and then I got to the bathroom. And then I saw, like, where your parents, where, yeah, the, the yeah. you know, your parents room is, and none of you guys have doorknobs. <laughs> like, where are I, I the doorknobs? And I just was sitting there so embarrassed to say, well, my sister is bad and <laughs> we can't have doorknobs. So he said he was using the bathroom and just praying that nobody would walk by because the wind would just open, <laughs> open the, the door. Because there was no, oh there God. wasn't even like the thing to hook There were the, doorknobs on the bathroom. No, the middle bathroom had no doorknob, girl. Girl. No, it didn't. The okay, one that connected to my room had no doorknob. Oh, I don't remember yes, that part. Yes, I remember that part. Well, <sighs> all I'm saying, for as a parent, I believe no, I was. I tried my best hey, hey, hey. to be involved with my daughters. Yeah. And this is the funny part. As I grow as now that they're adults, they tell me stories. And I said, How, when did that happen? So there's so much time in the day for something to happen, and I thought I was on it, but mm-hmm. they still did stuff. And I, I, kept, I said, well, where was I? You were there. Yeah, but I... <laughs> you were there. So I don't know. I just tried mm-hmm. my best to be involved. I tried my best to be involved. I tried my best to stay on top of it, but we're, you know... Dave likes to call her a helicopter mom. He's like, you're a helicopter mom. Well, I think that And a helicopter grandma. You know how you hear stories about kids that seem okay, but you really don't? But They're not okay. They're not okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the only way you're going to know that is to, you know, do a little prying, do a little sneaking. <laughs> Make sure they're okay. Well, was you want to read their side notes. Was there ever a time where you were doing some sneaking and you were like, what the hell? <laughs> what, <laughs> what are they, they up doing? To? Yes, Her. with me. I know. We would tell Kyle. At what age okay. was were these events happening? She started cutting up like junior high school. But we would tell her, because back then it was so the old com- like the computers, no, like 13, 13 maybe. So we would tell Kyle, don't erase your history. If you erase your history, your computer's coming out of your room, mm. and we're going to put you in the family room so we can yep. watch you. computer ended up in the family room. Don't erase, because, you know. <laughs> I, I, actually, I don't know. I'm kind of glad that we, I don't know what I would do now with the way the social media oh has evolved. Right. I, I, I just do don't know what I would do now. I My just kids don't go happen. crazy. Mm-mm. Yeah, I just I don't know what I would do. I'm trying to get to a farm. If I had a kid that was in like middle school, I would cry. I would. Um, I would. More power to you, mamas that are hard. dealing with that yeah. right now. It, it is hard. So just monitoring. I mean, we've got to monitor the kids better. I feel like the kids nowadays are so grown, and it's not mentally. They just they just look grown because they they're grown. trying to look. Like what they, you know, they're trying to imitate and mimic kids. what they see on social media and whatnot. Or they, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's what wearing makeup yeah. now. And it's like, when we were kids, we were, we, we were kids, you yeah. know. Yeah. I it's, wasn't um, allowed for all that and, stuff. and that's hard. It's hard to keep our kids young with the way that society is. Moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And innocent. I feel yeah. like I always have people who comment on like pictures of Ryder and stuff and they're like, thank you for letting her be a kid. Like yeah. the way she dresses, what mm-hmm. she's doing. And I'm just like. I always see that and it stands out because it's sad to me that someone even has to acknowledge Knowledge, that, like she's right? a kid, that she is a kid. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what else am I supposed to be doing? Right. Well, things have changed. I remember when I was young, we couldn't wear black. I mean, there were certain things my yeah, parents my just mom just for the not, longest my, my time. My mother wouldn't let us do that. My mom didn't mm-hmm. let me wear black. She was like, no, you cannot have a black shirt. <laughs> or yeah. red lipstick. Yeah. yeah there are certain things. My dad wouldn't re- let me wear leggings. Well, dad was, I remember when I first started wanting to wear makeup, he was like, you can't wear makeup until you learn how to properly take it off. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't know how to clean it and, like, keep your skin, skin fine, yeah. like, then you don't need to put it on. Mm-hmm. So, I think. That he, makes sense. Yeah. I feel like they always, both of you guys always 
you know, we're teaching. We try to pres- to preserve the innocence. It's really hard because even if you try at home, there's also there's always there's school outside, and friends so. and out, outside. That's influence. why I feel like I was going crazy. Is because you know, it, it wasn't. You that. feel like you were too sheltered. Is that why you went crazy? So you're feeling rebellious. I was sheltered and within like my school environment, I would say. Um, but home was kind of open. But home, right. we were very open. But it's you know when you're when you're a kid, you're looking to your peers. You're not necessarily okay. saying, "Oh, I see what my mom's doing and my dad's doing," and that you know you could see, you take note. But it's you know you still look to your peers and. Um, so strong legs. Uh-huh. Okay, if I could give one word of advice to moms or a, or or a wife is embrace your situation. Mm-hmm. Embrace being a mother, mm-hmm. because I think a lot of a lot of um, stress comes when you're not accepting of your new life, mm. your new life That's... as a wife and a mother, or mm-hmm. a or not a wife, or you know, but just a as wife a parent. and a career a woman, right. a wife, mother, and a career yes. woman. Yes, embrace your status because yeah. once you embrace it, it becomes much much easier because you're not fighting it in your head. Mm. Uh, I like that. I, I like that too. This is who I, I like am. that this a lot. Is, right, and I I embraced being a mother, and I embraced being a wife, and I embraced work. And that mm-hmm. was my focus. It's not that I didn't have fun still doing it. Right, but it's you embraced just, your situation. Embrace your situation. And I don't know if you understand what I... Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, if you are if you have a baby, but you're still trying to figure out how to go out, I mean, right. that's a conflict. It's, Big. It's, it's just a conflict. Yeah. So embrace that you're now a mom. Embrace that you're working. Be in that moment. Be in that moment. Thank you for picking us. You got in my line, but thank you. <laughs> I love y'all. But yes, embrace the moment. Embrace that moment. Yeah, be in the moment. Oh, I like that advice, like that. mommy. Me too. Yeah. All right, my I think the three amigos outside Parker, Ryder, right. and Boz have um, had a lot of time out there to play. <laughs> yes. yes, Ace is up Ace now, is now, y'all. Up. So I feel like we should wrap it up. I am so happy that we finally got you on yes. to the podcast. Yes. Thank you. Thank I'm you. excited. Yeah, and you kind of beat us to how we end. I mean, every. Uh, yeah, I feel like you just gave yeah. some words of advice. Really good advice. We end with, so now you have to do a WTF. Uh, every week we end with words of advice or a WTF moment that recently happened. You just gave really good advice. So you're going to have to think of something else. What's your WTF moment? Well, I'll, I'll stick with the advice. I don't have one. Or you could get more advice. Do you want mm-hmm. someone else to go first? Yeah, you go first. I'll go first. <laughs> Um, oh, Ace is smiling and laughing at his mommy. Um, well, I was, you know, feeling, I felt like my sugar was low the other day and I had no energy and I was at Cheyenne's house and I saw she had these little mini cans of Coke and I poured some Coke in a cup with some ice. Okay. And I feel like God was like, girl, you're not supposed to drink that Coke. And <laughs> Boz ended up picking it up. And he said, what's this, mom? And then he was walking over to me. And he kind of tripped a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh. And it spilled on my computer keyboard. And That was God saying, um, no. My, or my laptop keyboard. And that was this was the day before my birthday. So I was really stressed out. And that was like my WTF moment. But not going to lie, the actual day of my birthday, I was happy that I did not have a laptop. Um, Why? <laughs> boss started school on my birthday, which was the greatest gift. And uh-huh. sometimes you got to just stop and, like, be still. Be in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and be present and be in the moment. So I was actually, like, kind of happy at the end of the day. I still got to get my computer back. But it was a it was a WTF that turned into a bot. Like, I was still able to take the positive out of it and Good. just... Be still on my birthday and enjoy it and just be with my family and be happy. Oh, um, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, my WTF. So Ryder was really, really easy to potty train, like super easy. Took me like two days. No problem potty training her. But getting her to sleep um, through the night without a pull-up has been like a whole nother battle. So recently we have been doing you know sleeping without pull-ups i make sure that she's not like drinking water really late but Ryder is a wake up 4 a.m want to drink water type of kid so it's really hard to kind of break her out of that but she's done so well without sleeping in a pull-up for really for a few months um 
I don't know what happened last night. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had just a rough night all around. Ace normally sleeps throughout the night. He woke up last night around like 1 a.m., was really, really fussy. Zach was really tired. Ryder was in the bed with us, and it kicked him down below. So he was grumpy because he was sore. And then, like, Ryder does this thing with her arm where she just, like, flails it out really fast. And so he got, um, the, yeah, he got, like, the wind knocked out of his throat. Oh, my God. Poor so, Beck. Yeah. So <laughs> he went and slept in Ryder's bed because he was just like, I'm getting, I'm physically this. getting beat. Like, I'm, I'm leaving. So <laughs> I'm in the room with both the kids. Ace goes back to sleep, so I was really happy about that. Then around, like, 4 a.m., Ryder lets out this, like, really, really loud gas and i'm just thinking whoa like that woke me up it was so loud and then i'm thinking wow that means she's like really really relaxed down there and next thing i know i just it got really warm (laughs) and i'm like oh she's peeing on me because Ryder cuddles like she sleeps literally on top of you so uh, she's like mom and i'm like Ryder, and she goes i'm peeing (laughs) <laughs> and I'm literally laying there like so exhausted because I feel like I just finally Ace woke up right before this because he normally <laughs> wakes up sometimes around four. So you just went so, back to yeah, sleep. Yeah, Ace just went back to sleep and I was like laying there and I'm just like, oh, she's peeing. And I was just so exhausted. And she's telling me she's peeing and I'm like, rye, rye, like, you know, whatever. So I get right her up. I, I, you know, I'm taking her clothes off. So I say, okay, sit right here. So she sits on the other side of the bed, and I'm running over to her room to get her clothes. I see Zach all curled up in her pink canopy bed, and I want to slap him. <laughs> and I come back in the room, and Ryder's sitting on, like, a different part of the bed. So I'm like, Ryder, stand up so I can, you know, I got a towel. I'm, like, wiping her off and stuff. And then I look on the mattress where she was sitting, and I said, Ry, did you pee again? And she goes, it was a lot. And I'm like, <laughs> she oh, was still asleep. my God, she, she was, was still asleep. Yeah. And she kept peeing. <laughs> so then I'm wiping her down, and she goes, I need to sit on the toilet. She sat on the toilet and peed more. Like, there was so much pee in her. I'm like, girl, what is this? What is going on? So now she's awake. And, like, now I have to, you know, change the sheets, do all this stuff. And I'm, Zach is still asleep in Ryder's bed, and I just wanted to jump on him. But that's a whole nother story. It took me like an hour to fix this whole ordeal. And by the end of the night, you know, I fixed it. I soaked the mattress and stuff. I got her back in bed. And she looks at me and she goes, Mom, let's cuddle. Like, come on. I need to cuddle with you. And I just wanted to scream. And right when I got her to sleep and I was so happy because it took a while to get her to go back to sleep, Ace woke up. No. I'm barely going off of no sleep right now, and I've had a field day of working all day today, and that is my WTF. I got peed on last night. It was great. Dad, what are you doing? Photobomb. <laughs> I hate you. All right, this is my relationship advice. So I gave parenting advice, mm-hmm. and be in the moment, like you said. Mm-hmm. My relationship advice is don't give a person what you think they need. Ask them what they need. <laughs> she really liked that, y'all. Liked that. <laughs> I swear you need to and watch her YouTube. YouTube. You need, yes, and go to YouTube. How she thought that she just she <laughs> really she still She thinks it's she so just dropped major. a gym. It's major. Okay, so you most said, people, what does that mean? Explain right, that. Explain it because to us. Because most people, okay, for instance, what do if you look at TV? People bring their wives flowers or whatever. Yeah. Do they want those flowers? Some do. Some do. Some do. Some do. But maybe some don't. Right. So my point is, and flowers is probably not a good example, but mm-hmm. make sure you ask your mate what, what they, they want. want. Got it. That's a good advice. And give yeah. them what they want instead of what you think Can they Can you need. give us a better example? Like your love languages? No, no, not love okay. language. So what's something that you want in a relationship? What I mean by that is we all have different needs and wants, mm-hmm. and everyone is different. There are some generic needs or, or generic things that mates think about the other person, right? Mm-hmm. But you need to clarify what's important to your mate, and you may need to ask, or you may need to tell them mm. what's important to you. What is your And love language may be a nice word to use, too. Mm-hmm. 
But it's a lot of times I feel in relationships, we do what we think a person needs instead of understanding what their needs are mm-hmm. and, and what would make them happy. So I don't know. I've, I've gotten much better in expressing myself because I'm more mature now and older yeah. and my new relationship. And um, I told Dave, you know, I, I want to go to the salon. And then when I'm getting ready to leave, they say, well, your husband took care of it. Aww. I mean, there's stuff like that. Little but, things yeah. like little that. Little things yeah. like that that would, you know, are special. That would make no you feel money. good. It would yeah. make me feel good. It would, it would let me know that my mate, my man is listening. paying attention. Yeah, he's and listening yeah. to you. Okay, so that's what I mean. You know, try to give a person what they want instead of what you think they want, what's important to you. Or what you, you want for them. Or what, you, or what you want for them. So I told him this, and maybe like a month later, I went to get my hair braided. Mm-hmm. And when I and he was he insisted on dropping me off that day, which is not abnormal for Dave. He'll, you know, yeah. He sometimes he when I go get my hair done, he thinks that I may meet you to get my nails done. He thinks that and mom is gonna meet up with me after, and then you know I don't return her back home at an appropriate time. Apparently, so I think that was one of those days. And he's like, "I'm gonna take you," and I'm like, "Dave, for what?" And he was like, "I'm taking you. okay." Because then she's stranded and then he I'm has stranded. to come back. He's so annoying for that. <laughs> He knew what he was doing. He's yeah. caught on to our game, Mom. Oh, he's so funny. <laughs> so that day when I went to, um, I asked her how much, and she said, your husband already took care of it. You don't know how. Mm-hmm. I Girl, love that. She came home. She told me the story. She was so, so happy. happy. I was happy. Like, because she, he listened. Right. Yeah. And I think that sometimes I think we that, may, that really matters. It yeah. matters. Sometimes we may give our mates subliminal messages, but they don't really catch it. They're just it. like, mm. Stay <laughs> Zach. I like my nails done and my hair done. I like massages and walks on the there beach. It was not subliminal, I'm telling you. But you probably don't listen to our podcast. Yeah. So you probably won't get the message. <laughs> and she doesn't want a television for Christmas. <laughs> All right, guys. That was funny. Yeah, I've had so much fun. The kids are back now. We're going to wrap it up. Really appreciate having you on the podcast with us. As you guys can see, all the babies are here now. We're going to end this because it just got a little crazy. If you can follow us at Think Loud Crew. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also listen to us on your favorite podcast platform apple spotify google etc again my name is r kyle lynn you can find me on instagram at r kyle lynn and my name is cheyenne you can follow me at shy not shy and i'm shannon and you can follow me at hair by I'm shannon buddy. c What's your i'm buddy and i'm and i'm buddy okay who are you i'm right and i'm courting and i live it out loud <laughs> Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man.